Hey everybody. Today I want to talk about cyanobacteria. Every time I do a treatment on it or I do a video talking about it in one of my tanks, uh, I often get people asking me questions about whether or not it's dangerous to be around because they've heard stuff about how cyanobacteria can cause various health issues and so on and so forth. And I've had some people take it really seriously and tell me, you know, I'm taking a grave risk by having this stuff in my aquarium. And there seems to be a lot of confusion about whether or not cyanobacteria is harmful for us or dangerous to be around. And so today I want to talk about that aspect of cyanobacteria bacteria because I've been doing a little bit of reading about it today just to sort of figure out whether what I always sign of assumed to be true uh, really was true and it turns out that I was right um, or at least I believe I'm right we'll get into that in a minute so as I'm looking for whether or not cyanobacteria is dangerous for you or not, all I could really find in the danger category is what are known as cyanobacteria harmful algal blooms or CHABs. And these almost invariably involve large volumes of cyanobacterial blooms in uh, large bodies of water or possibly muddy, wet soil, but usually these blooms occur in bodies of water that have high amounts of nutrients, both phosphates and nitrates, and are usually caused by uh, stagnant or even stratified water. You know, certain areas of the water move at different rates than others, and this can cause these blooms to occur. Uh, they generally refer to these blooms in terms of being uh, throughout the water, what I tend to think of as green water, uh, although it can occur in the sort of mats that we get in our aquarium when we, when we develop the cyanobacteria in our aquarium, uh, especially in mine, I know it grows in these sort of sheets and mats, and those can be problematic too in these large bloom scenarios. But everything I found about the dangers of cyanobacteria, first of all, involved massive amounts of the cyanobacteria to begin with. It always involved these outdoor scenarios. I never saw any article or any reference or any science paper or anything that made any kind of mention of cyanobacteria uh, in the aquarium or anything. I did read a lot of stuff about cyanobacteria in our drinking water supply, and that can indeed cause health issues. But again, I'll be getting to that in a minute. So most everything I'm reading, with the exception of the drinking water supply, about the dangers of cyanobacteria involve these outdoor environments, these you know, large bodies of water, large blooms of these cyanobacterial colonies, and it only involves certain species of cyanobacteria. There's thousands of different species of cyanobacteria out there, and only some of them produce this handful, this small group of toxins that can be dangerous to us. And they can also be dangerous to our pets as well. But not only is it a small group of toxins, it's only a limited number of cyanobacteria that produce these toxins and typically exposure to them that is a dangerous level of exposure is when you go swimming or drinking the water. If you're drinking contaminated water, then you're consuming large enough quantities of these toxins that you can have health issues. And some of the health issues can be very serious. Uh, renal failure, nerve damage, you know, it can be some serious issues, you know, no, no mistake. Some of it might be a runny nose or hay fever-like symptoms, but you can have some pretty serious symptoms if you are exposed to these high levels of these certain types of toxins. Uh, in addition to swimming in it or drinking it, if you've got open cuts on your hand and you're spending a lot of time working around it, and again in the muddy soil, and you're getting high concentrations of this toxin directly into open injuries, that can cause uh, issues. You can develop tumors in the skin and so on and so forth. Again, these scenarios are not common though. And that's what I'm going to end with in a few minutes. We'll get back to that. So after reading all this stuff about all this outdoor stuff and all these ways of exposures and what can happen to you, I finally just wanted to know, like, what about my aquarium? What about, you know, is there any harm in my aquarium? And so I started doing a little research on that. 
you know, do, is the cyanobacteria in my aquarium dangerous or harmful to me? And when I got to doing that kind of research, which is not surprising for me to find, there's almost no real research out there. The aquarium hobby is not widely researched because it's just not a lot of money involved in it. Um, the aquaculture industry does research into nitrates and that sort of thing because they stand to lose money when fish die. The aquarium hobby, there's no scientists out there working to find out why my fish are dying in my aquarium because they don't care. Aquaculture, they care, and they spend the money to find out what kills fish and so on and so forth. So generally, when you're researching fish and stuff, you're not going to find aquarium stuff. You're going to have to find that kind of information elsewhere. So it wasn't too surprising that I didn't see a lot of research about whether or not the cyanobacteria in our aquariums is dangerous. But the long and short of it for me is what I've always believed, and back at the beginning of the video I had said I'd always sort of assumed that it was not dangerous. And here's the reason I assume that it's not dangerous. If it was, you'd know about it. You know, when I got to doing the research part of it, when I was looking for the, you know, is it dangerous in my aquarium, I didn't come up with any science papers or any documentation or any news articles or anything indicating any body getting sick or anything from any aquarium anywhere but what i did find was a ton of forum questions and comments and threads and all that kind of stuff forums are riddled with conversations about whether or not cyanobacteria is dangerous and to me a forum is basically somebody that doesn't know something is asking another group of people that doesn't really know either and then they all have a conversation about what they all think they know and so forums are not really good places to find information they can be treasure troves if you know how to sift through them properly but forums is the blind leading the blind in, in the vast majority of cases I find. So they can be valuable tools, but at the same time, you've got to really kind of know how to sift through the information in forums. And again, in this case, I didn't even look at the information. I'm just making note of the fact I didn't find any science on it, but I found a ton of forum conversations about it. So that sort of reinforces for me the idea that if people really got sick from cyanobacteria in your aquarium, You'd know about it, you'd hear about it, there'd be news articles about it, people at the pet store would tell you about it, be careful of this because this can make you sick, or if your dog drinks out of your aquarium, they'll get sick. My cats drink out of my aquariums all the time. My cats drink out of the aquarium that I never touch all the time. I don't have sick cats, you know, I'm not sick, I don't have tumors all over my hands from sticking my hands in my aquarium, and you just don't hear people it's just not an issue. It's just not something you hear about in the aquarium hobby. So that alone should be enough to tell you that there's just not a lot to worry about when it comes to the cyanobacteria that we have in our aquariums. Can it make you sick? Maybe it's possible, I guess. I'm not, you know, I don't know all the different species that might grow in every circumstance and so on and so forth. But unless you're inhaling large quantities of sort of aerosolized water, like if you're water skiing, kind of inhaling large quantities of water, if you're not drinking your aquarium water, and if you're not sticking your hands for long periods of time with open sores and smearing mats of cyanobacteria into your open cuts, then you're probably going to be okay. You know, otherwise we'd be hearing about it on a regular basis. And I'll leave you with the idea that think about the old uh, myth when you were a kid, you probably heard about if you do a whole uh, package of Pop Rocks and then drink a whole can of soda it'll make your stomach explode you know i was probably in third grade when i first heard that and it was always the big dare of getting the one kid that was brave enough to try it because he was always afraid it was going to happen i did it well i didn't drink the whole can of soda because i didn't really you know i can't drink a whole can of soda that's gross um too much carbonation for me but I didn't worry about it in the sense that I knew even as a child that this cannot be a real story if one child ate Pop Rocks and then drank soda and their stomach exploded, you would not be able to buy Pop Rocks on the shelf anymore. That would not be something that would be sold anymore. You would hear about that kind of thing on the news. It would be a big deal if eating Pop Rocks and drinking sodas made your stomach explode. So the fact that it was not a big deal, let me know that that's just silly. That's nonsense. There's no way that that can be a true story. And here I am at, you know, nearly 50 years old and not once have I heard a single story of anybody ever dying from Pop Rocks. And I also have never heard a story. It doesn't mean there's not one out there, but I've never heard a story about anybody getting sick from cyanobacteria in their aquarium. 
So that's my two cents on it. Again, I'm not trying to give you the definitive, you know, this is the end all be all of what you need to know about cyanobacteria or whatever. And if you know something I missed, by all means, let me know. Or if, you know, you've got any other pointers, questions, whatever, by all means, you know, the whole idea of these videos is to get a conversation started. So I'd like to hear your thoughts about it. If you enjoyed this, let me know. Make sure you're subscribed. You won't miss anything else I got coming up because you never know what it's going to be with me. Don't forget this one here is my 125 gallon new world tank. Thanks again, and I'll see you real soon in the next one.